with bereaved parents and with those of us who support them, how could we help? And her reply was something along the lines of, well, a lot of my time is spent unpacking incorrect information on social media platforms. So if we can make it easier to make sense of what actually was available and what parents can do, that would be amazing. Uh, and if you know Vicky, you know she uses the word amazing a lot. Um, <laughs> well, we started from there. Well, she does now. <laughs> uh, it started with a coffee, a cup of tea, and an honest question. Um, and I think my reflection on this point is there's a real power in asking. And we need to keep having those purposeful cups of tea um, as Crown agencies, and I think. But also more importantly, to hear from each other and to ask after each other. And I think that echoes a little bit of what Jane said in terms of asking questions, asking after each other. Um, the second point uh, was this Whakapanata. In our first two, we created the time for everyone in the room to share their story. There was about 20 of us that gathered in early December. We asked them to share the reason for being in the room. And we allow people to speak to their experiences as bereaved parents. I think of the 20 people in the room, 14, maybe 15 of them were. And it was an amazing experience to actually connect with people in that way, to connect with them as whānau, as sisters, as aunties, as brothers, uh, and as friends. Um, and in doing that, we, we were able to make a connection right at the start before we even had any conversations that was much deeper and much more personal than just their job title or the employer that they represented. And it was, um, it, it led all of this work. Um, on, a, on a really personal note, for me, these connections have actually helped me. Um, it helped me speak to my story, to speak to myself, I suppose. So you know To acknowledge my second child, uh, at 13 weeks the system calls that a miscarriage and it provides a medical response. Uh, and I was there, we saw that scan, uh, and then my wife fell apart. And being part of this process, I've been able to say to myself that they don't. I never knew them, and I had two beautiful boys, really beautiful. But I miss them and the life they may have had. And that's okay. And I guess, in a small way, being part of those conversations, being able to say that here in front of you, even just to myself, and I, but even just to myself, as a result of that, Whakapanonatanga has helped me heal a little. Um, we made those connections and we made those stories the starting point of all of our work. And we sought to honour those connections and the giving of those stories from those in that room. This took a lot of time. <coughs> if you know the ways of government, we'd like to have meetings in which we just push through and do things. <laughs> uh, but that hour of that buoy in December has set the scene and the tone for all of this work. And so it matters, and it's been central to how we engage. And I believe it must continue uh, if, we're develops, if we're to develop services as a crown and matter to families and citizens of our world. We need to keep building connections with each other in our places and in our spaces, openly and honestly. And this can be challenging. What was really uh, uh, powerful to see in, in the tuhui that I led and facilitated is that people were challenging each other. People from SANS were standing up to challenging representatives in the Ministry of Justice. And the Ministry of Justice were hearing that and honoring that too. And so I think it can be challenging, but it is very much, I think, worth the effort. Um, government services are often designed and delivered to citizens. We call this needs-based or entitlement-based, and you may or may not be aware that we create a lot of forms by which you apply to these services. <laughs> this bias informs all of our service design and, and customer delivery. And this bias has meant by extension that often we as the Crown we, as the Crown, haven't engaged in conversations with Farnell about what grief is and how we can support it. Mm. Vicky shared with us at the first two the perspective of grief with our fathers. When my, when my daughter died, we went home from the hospital. It took us a week before we realised that no one was going to call. And 
And I realized then that there's no punk it for dead children. That statement really rocked me. And I think it's a powerful challenge to the bias that we have in Crown Services. Because how can the Crown provide services for a child that is no longer present? How can and how should the Crown design or provide any new service for bereaved parents? When the reality is that they are in such a grief that they struggle to comprehend how to begin navigating the numerous Crown services that are actually available. Grief is by definition an intensely personal experience that we share with those closest to us those who we choose to reach out to. And the Crown needs to honour that space. The Crown cannot be funny, but it can be an enabler to those that are. Holding to this concept means that we can reimagine how Crown services are shaped. It means that we can examine how we currently, what we currently provide with a new, in a new life. It means that we can explain Crown procedures and processes with better clarity. And it means that we can be more accessible. If I'm really honest, I think at times it means we, need, we, as the Crown, need to just get out of the way. In our first two, the concept of whanau pani was shared with, us, with the group that was there. And this concept is part of hanihana, and describes the process by which those in grief, in this case the bereaved parents, are allowed to be in their grief, while those that they trust, their whanau pani, will do what is required to help them navigate this time and space. A key point for us as we thought about this in this approach is that the ability of those in grief to make decisions is never taken away from them. Their choices, the choices and the available choices are brought to them and they, as the bereaved parents, are empowered to make the decisions they need to do with their child. Thus this site, this service, is actually, in, in a large part for me, uh, for those acting as fine out money. It's a service to enable parents to be in their grief, in that time and space, and also to empower them at that time of their greatest pain. It's not about removing grief. It's about honoring that experience. To be fine out money, to, to be bereaved, and to be the one doing the support requires, requires strength, unimaginable strength, heroism. Uh, and to my mind, as the Crown, we need to do better at serving those who provide support, to be the enablers of those individuals, to about empower them to do the mahi required in supporting those in grief, when they themselves are more than likely to be in grief. We need to lift them up. We need to lift you up. Um, as I said earlier, this is only the start. In that sense, today I suppose is a bit of a pause in all the work that's been done uh, to share what's been created and also to hear from you uh, and those of you here at the next uh, day and a half. Of course, there is still much to do. Um, there's more conversations to be had. But I believe that some of these learnings that we've started from a good place, a useful place. Uh, we look forward to continuing to share this conversation and to shaping this and, and other services that the Crown has and to continuing to find better ways for us to serve. I just want to give a couple of shout outs um, to Sam, to Katia, to Becky and Adele um, for all their efforts and heart in this really busy few months. I want to say thank you to the Catalyst team for their uh, their digital skills in terms of what you'll see on the screen. I want to say thank you to Ray and uh, his team Borahi for the, the beautiful name which will uh, be soon. I also want to say thank you to our colleagues at the Ministry of Justice, to Land Revenue, to the Ministry of Health and MB for their contributions as well. <clears throat> I want to say thank you to Pani, I want to say thank you to Melanie, I want to say thank you to Josie, to Lisa, to Vicky, to JJ, to Eric, to each of those brave, brave parents and those in our hui who trusted us, <laughs> who trusted us enough to share their stories. I hope we've honored that appropriately. And you know who to call if we have not. <laughs> um, uh, thanks, again. <laughs> uh, thanks again to each of you uh, for holding and making spaces for Fana to be in grief, for walking alongside them for the times, and places, and spaces that you do. Uh, we see you. We honor you. <coughs>